Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all, I look how I feel. I've been down bad since the plane ride, but I still got a word. I still got a word. And um, um, I'm going to be in Matthew 4 today, and this is just for the next season of our lives. So I'm going to wait a little bit to get everybody in. Um, but if you're just joining in, I'm going to be in Matthew 4. And it's just been sitting on me for the last couple of days. Um, I think until like last Tuesday. And I've been sitting with it. And then all yesterday, love you too. All yesterday, all, everywhere I looked, I just kept reading, be strong, be courageous. I gave the word that morning. And every time I scrolled up or scrolled down, it was a verse. Be strong, be courageous. It was so much that I just put my phone down for a second because I'm like, God, I hear you. And he's like, I don't think you understand. This next place that you're about to go, you're going to have to have courage. You're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to be brave. You're going to have to be courageous. And you might want to turn around because it looks bigger than you, but it's nothing that is bigger than you. Only God and him above. That's it. Everything here might look bigger, but you have dominion over everything. So as I was minding my business, and just trying to scroll just trying to go read something all I kept going back was be strong and be courageous be strong and be courageous I'm like okay I'm gonna get off Facebook I'm gonna go to TikTok be strong and be so I'm like I'm gonna get off and I'm gonna go to Instagram be strong and be courageous I'm like I'm just gonna open up my Bible be strong and be courageous I'm like okay God okay God what he's saying is that this next mission is gonna seem like mission impossible but if you look back over your life and what you've already survived, it looked like you've been on Mission Impossible because where you are now versus where you were then, it, it's not even supposed to be happening. It looks like you have a miraculous life and people are asking you how and you can't say anything but if it wasn't for God. And see, God loves that. God loves when we put if it wasn't for God because we're giving him the glory and God wants all the glory, all the honor. He wants all the praise. That's what God loves. I can't explain to you how I am, how I am, and where I got, where I got. Not my finances, not my favor, not my anointing, not anything. No one but God got me to where I am now. No one. And God loves when you give him all the glory. You, ex you excerpt you and insert God, and he loves that. So when you're telling your story about your next career move that God is getting ready to do or the next big move or the next marriage or whatever it might be, no one but God can get the glory for what's happening in your life. And God loves that. So I was I was like in a comatose like state this morning. I was like, I got to do this. I got to do that. And God was like, no, you need to rest. For the last two days, I've been resting, resting. And God is like, okay, get up and preach my word. So I'm like, okay, where you want to go, God? He led me to Matthew 4. And I started laughing because you're going to have to need courage. And Matthew 4 was Jesus in the 40 day, 40 night fast in the wilderness. So it says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I think a lot of people miss out on the fact that Jesus was led by the spirit. See, the devil can't lead you into temptation. He can't, he can't put a trap up for you. It said, then the spirit, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. God had already preordained that. Just like Job, the devil didn't have access to him. God allowed access. God led Jesus there. See, where God leads, you follow. Because God already knows it's a fixed fight. And that's what we're forgetting. Everyone talk about, oh, the devil tempted him. The devil tempted him. God led him there. God led him there. There's no place on this earth that God won't take you. There's no place that God won't go before you, stand beside you and behind you. He already had it planned out. It was a fixed fight from the jump. All Jesus needed to do was stay alive and survive. And that is what God is telling some of us today. Stay alive. He will find you. Stay alive. That's it. Be strong. Be courageous. Because God has already set the place for you to be. Where you are right now, God has already preordained it. You are not too far from God's grace. I don't care what you're facing. I don't know if it's eviction. If it's been divorced, whatever it might be, God already pre-orchestrated it. He already preordained it. There is nowhere that God has not already been and already predicted he predestined you to be right where you are and the next step and the next step and the next step after that. He's already done it. All you got to do is walk. And that's just the very first verse in chapter four of Mark. It said, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The devil didn't win. 
I know the devil thought, oh, I got him. He weak right now. I got him in a weak spot. I got him. No, you ain't got nothing. The spirit of the Lord led him there. And where God leads, he provides. If it's God's will, it's his bill. All of the above. It said the spirit led him there to be tempted. God knew that you can survive temptation. Even when it's that good, good temptation. Even when it's that good sneaky link or that good side piece. Even when it's all of that. God says, I know the plans that I have for your life. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. All of the above. It was already orchestrated. God knew that you were going to survive that temptation. He knew that you were going to survive that attack. That's why he set it up in the first place. The devil keep falling into the traps. You don't fall into them. The devil falls into them. You surpass the, you surpass the traps time and time and time again. It says, verse 2, and when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. You're about to have this hunger. See, the devil thinks that he caught you at your weak point because you're changing your life. And some of you have been celibate. So you might, you might run into that sneaky link that was that good one. Yeah, yeah, I'm being real, real, real with you. That's what I'm going to be. That's all I can be. You're about to run into that job that didn't really pay nothing, but they have all that gossip and a good juice. And it was, it was you know, you're about to run into some temptation because your, your spirit, your spirit is really strong, but your flesh is weak. And right now the devil is talking to Jesus's flesh. So the devil is about to talk to your flesh real quick. Like he know that your spirit is strong, but he about to talk to your flesh and you wrestle with your flesh every single day. Every single day you wrestle with your flesh. So the devil about to come talk to that hungry flesh real quick. Like, so I need you to be, I need you to be really paying attention to what's about to happen next. Let me keep going. It says, now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones um, to become bread. So J Satan don't really know who Jesus is, because if you really knew who somebody was, you wouldn't be saying, if you are. If you are, you'd be like, son of man, son of God, turn this into this. He was like, if you are, I need you to pay attention in this next season because somebody got an inclination of who you are, but they really don't know. They need you to open up your mouth and declare who you are and to say who God sent you to be. There's many people ask me all the time in my prophet. They'll put prophetess on it. They'll put pastor. They'll put deacon. They'll put, you know, they'll just put all these things on there. Evangelist. They'll put all of these things on my name. And I'm like, okay, if that's what you say. If that's what you say. If that's what you say. If that's what they say, let it be. That He said, if you are. And Jesus was like, all right, well, that's what you say. All right. He says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He quoted Bible back to him. He quoted a scripture back to him. He quoted God's word back to him. It is written, it is written. So when you get ready to go into this battle, when you get ready to go into this battle, because the battle is coming, it's already predestined, it's already written. When you get ready to go in the day, they be like, oh, who you think you is? Oh, you think you that prophet? Oh, you think you that pastor? It is written. That's all. I ain't got to explain who I am. It's already written. I don't got to go back and forth with you. It is written. God already declared and decreed who I was. God already spoke over my life who I was. I don't have to explain to you who I am, what my purpose is, what my destiny is. I don't have to say any of this to you. Because it is already written who I am. And telling you who I am ain't going to make it come back, come faster. That ain't going to do nothing. Actually, it might stop it. So I need not tell you who I am. But let me keep going. It says, Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up. Least you dash your foot against a stone. Psalms 91. All right. Least you dash your feet against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. See how the devil came in there real quick like and threw a little Psalms 91 up in there? He should see his angels have charge over you. At least you dash your foot against a stone. That's Psalms 91 right there. What's up? See, the devil think he knows scripture so well and he will quickly misconstrue it and flip it to where he can have the advantage. But if you know the word like you know the word, you won't play these word for word games with the devil. Jesus said it is written that you should not test God. That's what you should not do. I remember it. The people, I'd be like, oh, oh, show me in there where First Timothy, they said a woman can't preach this and that. And they'll throw the verses at me. They'll throw the verses at me. It is written who I am. 
I don't have to explain who I am and what my purpose is. If you feel like a woman can't preach, don't listen. Change the channel. Go mind your business. Go about your way. You ain't got to listen to me. I ain't got a word for you then because he who has ears, let him hear. That's it. That's all. I don't have to explain who I am to you. You are not God. That's the only one I have to answer to. And see, this is where the devil is going to try to play with you. He's going to come at you with all these scriptures because just like the devil quoted scriptures to Jesus, Jesus said, you shall not test God. If God has called you to be somebody and God has told you to do something, that's the only person you have to explain it to. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. Who ordained you? Who's covering you? God, God, God. I don't understand what you don't understand. God, God, God. That's the only thing I can tell you. God, God, God. That's the only answer I got for you. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. I can't tell you something that God has already ordained. God has already predestined. God, if you don't like it, take it up with God. If you don't like my answer, take it up with God. I don't understand what you don't understand. God is the answer. G-O-D. That's it. Yahweh. What, what, what else you don't want me to say? God. God. That's the answer. If you don't like it, take it up with God. I don't answer to man. I answer to God. If you don't like a woman preaching, it's many men out here. Go follow them. That, that's it. That's all. I don't understand. The devil thinks he's tricky. But Jesus said, it is written that you don't test God. Let me keep going. It says, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away from you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord, your God and him only you, um, will you serve. So the devil took him to this high mountain. He looked down and he showed him all this beautiful stuff. See, the devil is good at creating mirages. He's good at creating facades. He's good at creating images. He showed him all of this. If you would only bow down and worship me. Well, devil, you already took me through a couple of scenarios. So clearly you ain't the man that you claim that you are. Because your, your kicker should have been this from the beginning if you really want to get somebody's attention. If you really thought I was that weak. But see, the devil is good at creating images. He saw that he was hungry. So he saw the weak spot. So this is where I need you to do homework. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I need you to, to go to your weak spot and feed it. Feed it with the word. Wherever you're weak, if it's temptation, if it's um physical, if it's monetarily, if it's fornication, whatever it is, I need you to go and fill it with the word. The devil is about to try to come at your weak spot because he knows you're hungry there. I need you to, to fill that up with nothing but the word. Then he went to him. And he said, oh, I need to test you and uh, uh, fall off this roof and God will lift you up. No, nah, we ain't even on it. We ain't finna play these games with you, devil. We ain't even on this. So now he's going to come at you with, where a lot of people fall at. A lot of celebrities sell their soul for. A lot of regular people will sell their soul for. Judas sold Jesus for. There's a lot of people that will fall in temptation alley when it comes to money. And that's what the devil did next. He showed them all of these things. And he says, all of this would be yours if you just bow down and worship me. If you would bow down and worship me, all of this would be yours. But see, the devil don't have rights to that. That's not the devil's. The devil can have a temporary, like temporary fame. That's why I would like to say he will give you something temporary because everything comes with a, a, a catcher. Everything comes with um, you need to do this or this, you, this or this. I can't think of the right terminology for it, but everything comes with that. It, it isn't freely given. God gives it to you freely. The devil has restrictions on it. You don't just get that money. You don't just get that fame. You don't just get that wealth. You don't just get all of that gold that he promised. It looks so beautiful. It looks so tempting, but it's not yours. And it's not his to give to you in the, in the first place. It isn't his in the first place. So how can he give you something that isn't his? Make that make sense for me. Make that make sense for me. Quo, po, quo, plo, quo, plo, quick, pro, quo. I can't say the word right now. Anyway, y'all, everything comes with it. So he said that to Jesus and Jesus was like, um, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall not worship, um, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. We know 
that we have to only serve God. We only bow to God. We only worship God. That's it. That's all. The devil wants that so bad. He's been wanting that since he was an angel, since before God threw him out of heaven and he fell like lightning to earth. And God said, woe to the heaven, woe to the um earth and the sea when he kicked Satan out and all his little minions. He wanted to be worshiped so bad. So why would he just not try Jesus and be like, okay, you the son of God. I know that's who you are. Even though I'm going to say if, I'm going to say if, why don't you come over here and worship me and not him? Because I give you this. See, your God got you down here dying. Your God got you out here getting whipped and beaten and hung from, hung from the crosses and stuff. That's what your God got. Why don't you come over here and get some of this fame, get some of this glory, get some of this honor. Why don't you come over here and do that? And Jesus was like, nah, pimpin', I ain't, you know, I ain't, I ain't finna do that. I ain't finna do none of that. Cause God said, I'm not supposed to worship nobody else. I'm not supposed to worship nobody else. See, the devil is real good and real good at being conniving. And he's real good at being like that. Like, nah, we ain't, we ain't rocking with the other side. Cause the other side ain't really rocking with us. You just want to get God's chosen children to have like, yeah, I got your bed. It's kind of like a side piece. And that's either man or woman. Man or even woman. It's like a side piece that want to come into your relationship and wreck it just to say they got your man. Or I got your woman. They just want to have you for the glory right now and just to laugh in your face. And see, the devil want to get Jesus like, yeah, I got I got your son. I got your son. What you going to do now? I got the one who you so love. I got him. What you going to do now? But Jesus is like, nah, I ain't even on that. I ain't even on that. I'm not finna bow down and worship nobody but my father. I'm about my father's business. I've been about my father's business since before I was in heaven. Since I was side by side with him. Since I came down here to die for my people. I've been about my father's business. I'm gonna die about my father's business. Ain't nothing you can do to make me change my mind. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Stand in the knee of prayer because the devil's out here trying to tempt his children. But the devil will not win. The devil will not be successful in anything that he do. Anything that he do, he will not be successful. Listen, then the devil left him and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. So I'm going to stop it right there. <clears throat> I'm going to stop it right there because I'm not really feeling that well, but I'm going to stop it right there. Right after he got tempted, God knew that he was going to have to need people to come minister. It was the forest. It was the animals, the angels. Everything came together to gather together to give Jesus that, that minister and back in his spirit to let him know it's okay. We know what you saw. We heard what you saw. The devil's conniving. The devil's cunning. That's what the devil do. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You didn't fall. You did good. You did real good. You did real good. I know your body's weak. I know your body's weak. So God is sending in the people that are going to love him back to life again they're going to minister to him again after this battle god is going to send your people to you because he knows that you just survived something that a lot of people could not do you know how many people have went and you can see this in modern day society now look at the celebrities now look at them now and look how many of them have turned away from god and a lot of them have sold their soul to the devil and probably begging right now to come back but they can't come back because they signed that blood deal with that devil and it's too late now, unfortunately, for a lot of people. But God is saying the devil don't have you and he, he's not going to have you. A lot of you are very strong. A lot of you are very strong. Even though the devil thinks that you're weak, you're very strong. So even when the devil comes at you with all of these things, you might have to go a little bit longer. It might take you two, three, four, five years, ten years to get where you need to get to. But it's better to get it longevity than get a quick microwave blessing, which is really a curse from the devil. You would rather get it the long way. Listen, the devil thinks that just because you get it fast, fast money. I'm from the streets. So I'm going to talk real street. Fast money comes fast and leaves fast. Fast money comes fast and leaves fast. You want, you'll look back over your life in the streets, selling drugs, throwing your stuff around, being on that pole, and you won't have nothing to show for it. You won't have nothing to show for it other than a good story or when you was on that pole or when you was out there in that, on, in that street and you were just doing what you need to do for that little quick piece of change. But you ain't going to have nothing to show for it. Nothing. Because fast money comes fast and leaves fast. That's it. That's all. I done live this life. I'm getting real street because this is what it needs to be said. The, they will make it look like it's so good. They will make it look so good. They'll make the street life look like it's so good. They'll make it look like a 304, a young Miami, a city girl or whatever. They make it look so good. All in all, it, it, it put bodies on you. 
It put curses on you. You got to fight demons off of you. You got soul ties on you. You got people that you ain't mean to kill because you done served them up some bad stuff on you. You got all of these things on you because you trying to get a fast piece of money. Come fast, leave fast. But what stays on you are the demonic entities that have been atta attached to you. So now you can't sleep right. You can't eat right. You can't dream right. Now you got to go to God and you got to go try to get these things up off of you. And you wondering why you got depression on you when you laid with somebody that got depression on them and you ain't even know. Now that body had a curse on it. Now that body, all these things equate to you having to do some soul searching and some spiritual searching. It comes fast and it leaves fast. But what stays are the entities that are attached to you from laying with them people and serving them people. And trying to have that body. You ever see these people going under the knife constantly and constantly and constantly because they don't see themselves as beautiful. They don't see themselves as worthy. When in Genesis 1, before I get off, let me read this because I need to talk to some people that's mutilating their bodies because they don't think that they're beautiful. When God made you in his image, God made you beautiful. God made you his and in his image. But see, the world has a way of putting their beauty, their beauty um, statistics on you or whatever it is on you. And it's making you feel like you're not beautiful. So now you got to go get a BBL, a tummy tuck, a nose job, this, this, and that. You got to go get all of these things when God made you in his image see we looking at society but we're not looking at what god said and we're looking at what god said we don't need all of those aesthetics we don't need the doctors to go butcher on our bodies we don't need him to go do none of that because he ain't make us he ain't the creator them doctors ain't no creator the doctors are not the creator so yeah they're gonna tell you you look good because you got that cash you got that fast cash and all they gotta do is put you on and if you die oh well you just another body that's dead because they got their money regardless if you living or if you dying. Whether you living or dying. It said this. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Let me go back to 26. It said, then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our own likeness, that they may have dominion over every fish in the sea and every bird in the air and every cattle and over, um, over all of earth and every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God created man in his own image and God created him god created you you are his creation you ain't dr miami creation you ain't dr mexican over there whatever they got and dr dubai you ain't none of that you ain't got to go under the knife to look good baby you look good right now by yourself everything else the hair the makeup the whatever the gucci belt the gucci shoes all that stuff is just aesthetics with with or without that you're made in his image See, the devil is going to try to tempt you. So when you get that, you go get in there, you go go change all of this stuff. When the first thing you see when people get fame, the first six months they go through and they change everything. They look unrecognizable because in their own image, they were distorted. And when they get into that next level, this is why God don't want you to get to the next level without being ready. Because when you're not ready, you're going to conform to the room when you were meant to transform the room. Pay attention. You are going to conform to the room that you were supposed to transform the room. You got the light. You got the favor. You got the anointing. But you're going to go in there and you're going to see all all of these celebrities and you go like oh my nose oh my body oh my hair oh my eyes oh oh i gotta i gotta what's the doctor name you with and they gonna hook you up with that doctor that helped their sickness they're gonna hook you up with the doctor that created their sickness because they're not healed you went in healed and came out conformed when god says i'm sending in you healed because you are about to do a transformation in that room they are about to denounce the devil but if you get in there too soon if you get into that room prematurely you're going to conform to what you were supposed to transform god is saying i'm sending you in my image and i need to see you in my image and i need to see you when i'm ready and when you're ready because if you're not you're going to walk into that room and you're going to conform to what you're supposed to transform you are beautiful. You are handsome. You are wonderfully made. You are made in God's image. You don't need anything else added to you. If you want to put a little razzle dazzle on your hair, do what you need to do. If you want to put a little eyelashes on, a little nails, do what you need to do. But by any means, don't you go changing your body to fit these people, to fit American society or what the world society or whatever. You're supposed to transform, not conform to the devil. When Jesus went into that 40 day, 40 night fast, he didn't conform. He transformed. The devil was looking stunned. 
The devil thought that he had him one. The devil thought he had him one. The devil went in like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to go get him. God's favorite. I'm about to go get him. Instead, he left out. Jesus said, go away from me, devil. And he walked out with his head tucked between his tail because he couldn't do what he thought he was going to come do. He couldn't do what he thought he was about to do. Every time the devil comes up against you and you win that battle, your devil look real dumb. He walk away with egg on his face. He walk away looking real dumb because he was already bragging to his little minions about how he was about to go get God's favorite. How he was about to go get God's chosen. He laughing, but he ain't laughing all the way to the bank. Nah, devil, because we will not conform. Everywhere we go, we will transform. We will transform every room that we walk into. We will not conform to society. We will not conform to this beauty standards. We will not conform to this money that they trying to give us. When God will come down and do whatever he got to do to get us whatever he need to get us. Anytime I was ever in a rock in a hard place, I looked up at the sky and I said, God, you got me. God, you got me. Even this trip I just went on, I went and spent this money that I did not have. I got on the plane and I said, God, you got me. And by the time I got there, I had got it back because God got me. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, God will show favor because I am God's chosen and so are you. The devil knows it and God will provide because that is what he is. God is a good, good father. That is who he is, period. And there's nothing that you're lacking that God won't come and fill. There's nothing that you're lacking that God won't come give you. God will provide all of your needs. The want is just extra. God already has it pre-orchestrated what he's going to do. You're the only one that can talk yourself out of the blessings that God has over your life. You're the only one that can walk away from the blessings that God has over your life. The devil can't take nothing. It don't belong to him, so he can't take nothing. But you can give it away. If Jesus would have been like, yeah, I am kind of hungry. Give me that bread, devil. What that is? Oh, that's Parmesan oregano bread. Oh, that smells so good. Let me get that bread. Instead, he says, it is written that man should not live by bread alone. Mm -mm, I don't want that. I don't want that. It's, it's probably molded when I bite into it anyway. It's a mirage. It's an image. It's a facade. It's a rotten apple like Snow White. I don't want that. I bite into it and worms go come out. I don't want it, devil. I don't want it. I don't want it. Throw myself off a building. No, I don't need that. You see me do miracle signs and wonder. You know I could bring myself back if I wanted to. No, I'm good. It is written that I shouldn't even test God. I'm good. What am I over here dying for for nothing? I'm already coming down here to die for my people's sins. So what I need to die again for? No, I'm good. The only death I'm going to die is to die, die for my people and their sins. That's it. Go on about your business. Go on about your business. You about to give me some wealth, fame, honor. I already got that. They know my name. I'm Jesus from Nazareth. I'm Mary's son. I'm Joseph's son. I'm the son of God. They already know my name. Trust me. People already know your name. Do you know how many people know my name that I don't know know my name? Do you know how many times I get recognized in regular grocery stores? now that i don't even know these people they already know your name you don't got the money behind it you don't got the fame behind it but they already know who you are you know how many people scroll above my name and then come back because i got a word from them from god you know how many people act like they don't know who you are but they know who you are your name is already out there your name is already out there the devil is just trying to stop you whenever i hear the attacks that the devil are coming at me I know what's about to happen. When I hear people say, oh, you just this little pastor. Somebody called me and asked me for a job. And they said, oh, I heard about your little ministry. Oh, you mean my big ministry. That mean, that mean I'm finna get a big ministry, devil. Because you put a look in the front of, you put L-I-L -L in the front of, that means it's B-I-G in the beginning of it. That means God is about to do something big. And it's gonna be big. That means you've been watching me. And I've been blessing you. Yeah. So you need not call me talking about this little ministry. Ministry. You need to put some respect on my name when you call me asking me for something, devil. Yeah, but I know that that is already predestined by God. So you just give me context clues to where I'm about to go. Go ahead and put little in front of it if you want to, because I got B-I-G in the beginning of it. Because I know who I am. I know the promises on my life. I know that they are yes and amen, and I conform only to God. So you can dumb me down for a second, but in a little while, you're about to see. You can pass me right now. You can scroll past me now. But in a little while, you're going to see my name on billboards. You're going to see me on everywhere. You're going to be everywhere you are, Life Horizon. In a little while, devil. So you can get this little, you, you can take this little ministry. And, and, and yeah, I ain't hiring you, though. Go on about your business, though. I ain't, I ain't got time for no hater in my circle. Not not an uh, outright hater. Go on about your business, devil. Go on about your business, devil. Mm -mm. See, people always try to dumb you down because they know how big you are. 
They try to dumb you down because they know how big you are. And they hoping that they can put a little seed in there of doubt. And it might stop you from getting to where you're supposed to be. They're hoping that you get that little seed that they planted in there. But I uproot everything that is not from God. And I send it back to the pits of hell where it belongs. Because ain't no devil in hell going to stop what God has already set in motion. Your destiny is already set in motion. Your destiny is already set in motion. Don't you let no devil come and put no seed in there of doubt, of fear, of you not it. You are the man for the job. You are the woman for the job. And I don't care what no devil in hell say. He can't stop what God is about to do for you. It is you. And ain't nothing little about you. Ain't nothing little about you. Take that on somewhere, devil. Take that on somewhere, devil. We don't play the little games around here, devil. We don't put little in front of nothing that we do. It ain't your little ministry. It ain't your little business. It ain't your little restaurant. Everything you do from henceforth is big. Yeah. I don't care if you do got two customers. You got two big customers. They pay big $5 every time they come. They pay big money every time. They better put some respect on your name because what they got going, nothing, nothing. But you're setting things in motion. You're setting things in motion. And that's why the devil is trying to stop you from getting to where you need to go. By telling you that it's not big. By telling you it's little. But they ain't got nothing in motion. But you're setting things in motion. You got traction on, on your name. Everywhere you go, people know who you are. Let's stop playing. Let's stop playing. The devil knew who Jesus was. The devil knew who he was from the beginning, from the jump. That's why he ain't take um he ain't take Peter them out there to the wilderness. He ain't meet them out there. He ain't meet his he ain't meet his buddy Judas out there. Cause baby Judas would have took all that he offered. Judas would have took the bread. Judas would have jumped off. Judas would have got the gold. Judas would have did all of the above. He knew he was weak, but he know you're strong. He ain't going to get the ones he already know he got. He want the ones that he don't got. That's why he ain't going to get none of the 12 disciples. He came and got that one. Yeah, he came and got that one. And you're that one that the devil can't have. I'm getting ready to sign off, y'all, because I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> losing my voice. But ain't nothing little about you. They know who you are, and they always know who you were. You're beautifully made because you're made in God's image. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You're all of the above. Don't you go in that room and conform when you're supposed to transform that room. You're supposed to transform that room. Never forget who you are and whose you are. It is already written who you are. Yeah, before I get off, before I get off, go ahead and put big in the comments. Go ahead and put big in the comments because we about to make the devil mad right now because see, the devil think that you're L-I-L. And ain't nothing little about you. Ain't nothing little about you. Ain't nothing little about you. I don't care if it's your little hair business, baby. You're about to have a mega salon. I don't care if it's your little restaurant. You're about to have MasterChef kind of restaurant. Gordon Ramsay kind of restaurant, baby. You're big, baby. You have always been big. And I don't care what the devil say. Can't no devil in hell stop what God has already set in motion, baby. You better put some respect on your name. You better put some respect on your name when it's talking about you. If ain't nobody else going to respect you, you going to respect you. If ain't nobody else going to put big on your name, you better put big on them. Yeah, it's big, Pastor Lindaria White. What's up? It's big over here, baby. It's big over here. Ain't no little over here. Devil, you want to plant a seed a little, but it ain't no little over here. None of my ministry people got nothing little on them. None of my congregation got little on them because, baby, everything we do over here is big, devil, and you're going to respect every last one of us. Yeah, we don't do little things over here. They might swipe now, but they're going to look later. They might swipe now, but they're going to look later. We don't play around with the little word, devil. We don't play around with the little word. Because you put little trying to dumb us down when we're big. Yeah, I. Right. Yeah, I. Right. Yeah. We're big over here. Over here. Yeah. All right. I'm getting ready to sign off. If this message was a blessing, my link is always in the bayou. <clears throat> I don't have no voice. I'm going to have to go. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go. I love you all and have a good day. <laughs>